All right, so we will look at some more examples of categorizing numbers as uh, finite, infinitesimal, or infinite. So uh, how about, remember, h and k are positive infinite numbers. And if I looked at h minus k divided by h squared plus, say, k squared, the top is... Um, actually indetermined. Uh, I don't know. Is h minus k, is that a finite number? Is it an infinite number? Uh, I don't know a relation between h and k, so I'm already in a bind here. Um, and um, the bottom itself we know is infinite. So if the top is, say, infinite, then this is indetermined. If the top is finite, we're fine, because uh, then this would be uh, a, an infinitesimal. Uh, and if the top were an infinitesimal, we would be fine too. It would still be an infinitesimal. Uh, so really, the, the issue is we don't know what the top is. If it's infinite, uh, we don't know what's going on. So we're going to um, rewrite this. Uh, I'm going to break apart this fraction. So this is h divided by h squared plus k squared minus k divided by h squared plus k squared. And um, I'm going to do like we did in, in the previous video. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this h in the numerator. So I'm going to divide um, everything by it. So I get uh, 1 over h plus k squared over h, and then minus 1 over um, h squared divided by k plus Okay, so did this help us? Um, well, the top is now completely finite. We don't have to worry about the top. We know what's going on there. So really the issue is what is going on with the denominator? Is it finite? Is it infinite? Well, what we know is that h is positive infinite. Right? We know that. And k squared is positive infinite, and this ratio, um, okay, k squared over h, it's still an indeterminate form. But notice that if it's, um, so we have three cases. This is, uh, um, so we'll look at all three cases. Let's do that. So case one um, uh, is that k squared divided by h is infinite. Right? So we'll say k squared divided by h is infinite. And it's going to be positive infinite. In this case, h plus k squared over h is also positive infinite. Okay? No problem there. All right. Case 2 will be um, that, um, so case two, so we're going to have to look at all three cases and see, hopefully, we'll, we'll see some pattern here. Uh, second case will be that k squared is finite over h is uh, finite, not infinitesimal. In this case, then, h plus k squared over h. Well, this is a finite number. I add it to an infinite number. This still stays an infinite number. So far, so good. And the third case uh, is that uh, k squared over h is, is an infinitesimal. So case three, uh, we're going to be looking at um, when is k squared over h uh, if it happens to be an infinitesimal. So k squared over h is an infinitesimal. Um, but in that case, same as before, h plus k squared over h is still positive, infinite. So we weren't able to determine what k squared over h was. But it turns out we don't need to. If it, no matter what value it is, it can be any hyperreal number, and if we add it to an infinite number, it stays infinite. 
So that means up here, this fraction here is 1 divided by an infinite number, which means it's an infinitesimal. And now, the same goes right here. The argument is identical, that this term is 1 divided by an infinite number. So both these are positive infinitesimals individually. And so when I take their difference, um, I'll get an infinitesimal. So this expression right here is simply an infinitesimal number. Now, I don't know if it's positive or negative, um, but we're not asked to determine that. We're just asked to determine whether it's infinitesimal or not. And so uh, h minus k divided by h squared plus k squared uh, will always be an infinitesimal. All right, that was a, a, a challenging one, definitely. Uh, required us to, to put our thinking caps on and, and analyze and see that we had three cases to consider. Um, let's do a couple more. So how about um, uh, another indeterminate form? Uh, so let's look at um, the square root of h plus 1, uh, and we'll subtract square root of h. Oops. So this is an infinite number. This is an infinite number, and we're taking the difference. So this is, again, an indeterminate form. I'm adding or subtracting, if you will, two infinite numbers, and I am not sure. Now, if this were addition, it'd actually be easy, because uh, we know that h is a positive infinite number. And so if we added them, we would know adding to infinite adding to positive infinite numbers gives you another positive infinite number. So the problem here is the, the, the subtraction. So there's a very common way for a mathematician to get rid of subtraction, and that is to multiply by its conjugate. So uh, especially when I have radicals involved. So if I multiply the top by h plus 1 plus square root of h. But of course, I can't just multiply by anything willy-nilly. The only thing I can multiply this equation by and keep it the same is if I multiply by 1. So I will multiply by an algebraic equivalent to 1, right? h squared plus 1 plus the square root of h. This whole ratio, this whole fraction is 1, so I haven't changed anything. But what's nice is that the top, this is the difference of squares, right? If I multiply this out, these, these are conjugates, and so what I get is h plus 1 minus h for the numerator. On the denominator, I just have square root of h plus 1 plus root h. And we get some things cleaning up here. h plus 1 minus h, the h's cancel, and so this is just equal to 1 over square root of h plus 1 plus h, a root h. And the bottom is infinite, and so we're looking at a reciprocal, so this whole thing is an infinitesimal. So multiplying by the conjugate was the algebraic technique we needed to uh, um, work out uh, what this happens to be. So we see that we take the difference of two infinite numbers and we end up with an infinitely small or an infinitesimal uh, number. Now one more and we'll call it quits. Let's look at um, uh, this example. I've got uh, 1 over epsilon oh, come here. 1 over epsilon times uh, 1 minus 1 over uh, square root of 1 plus epsilon. So this is an infinite number, and um, this here is also an infinite number. Right? This is finite 1, but 1 over square root of 1 plus epsilon is an infinite, well this is an infinitesimal, so this reciprocal is an infinite number. So I'm um, going to be looking at an infinite number when I multiply here. This will be infinite number, so I'm actually looking at a difference. So it's a little convoluted, a little uh, spaced out right now, but this is still an indeterminate form. 
So how do I deal with this? Well, I will um, make this whole expression into one fraction. So common den den denominator is root 1 plus epsilon. So I get root 1 plus epsilon. Oops, I need to uh, get my epsilon. I'm going to epsilon first. So 1 over epsilon times square root of 1 plus epsilon minus 1 all over root 1 plus epsilon. So I've just combined this expression to a single fraction. And um, just like before, I've got this radical and I'm subtracting. So I am going to multiply by a fancy 1. I'm going to multiply everything by um, 1 root 1 epsilon plus 1. This will actually take care of the radicals up there. And on the bottom, I'll multiply by 1 plus epsilon plus 1. So I've just multiplied everything by 1. Nothing changes. I can still write this as equal to, um, come over here, 1 over epsilon times. Now when I multiply by the conjugate here, I'm going to get a 1 plus epsilon minus 1. And on the bottom, when I distribute through, I'm going to get 1 plus epsilon plus root 1 plus epsilon. Do a, a little house cleaning. The 1's cancel, so I get 1 over epsilon times epsilon divided by 1 plus epsilon plus root 1 plus epsilon. And notice we're going to get canceling here. So finally, this whole expression is algebraically equivalent to 1 over 1 plus epsilon plus root 1 plus epsilon. And the top is finite, so is the bottom. And right? epsilon plus root 1 plus epsilon, that's an infinitesimal. But as soon as I add 1 to it, then this thing is bigger than 1, hence it's a finite number. And so this is finite but not infinitesimal. All right, so hopefully those examples uh, give you some guidance. Uh, definitely practice. You cannot learn this by watching somebody else do it. Uh, so practice, 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 and you will be successful at this. And this, again, is a key technique for being successful in this class.